time is a limited source, only 24 hours a day. So we learn to use it as effectively as possible. But how do we use time, really? To use the last minute to our advantage, people of history developed a certain skill. They kept track of time. That's because using time effectively starts from dividing time. And to divide time, we need to measure it. Just to raise awareness, what if we had no timekeeping skills at all? A lot of terrible things would happen. I mean, the teacher would just go on and on and on with this class because he doesn't know when to end it. You would always eat horrible ramen noodles because you couldn't keep that four and a half minutes. Five more minutes in the bed would be history. Online gaming, streaming, internet, all bye-bye. Of course, these aren't the only drawbacks of not measuring time, but you get the point. We need time, measured time. Then again, the privilege of knowing time didn't come from God. In the prehistoric ages, people only used their bare eyes to see the sun. Well, to be precise, the sun made them do certain things, but it still functioned as a reliable way to count days and nights. So how do we get from simply seeing the sun to modern digital clocks? Paradigms about how we measure time have shifted every few centuries, and every time it happened, it changed the perception of people completely. Can you imagine how awkward it would be if people started using half a second as a timestamp? The amazing thing is that the people of history overcame this barrier and eventually made progress in society and science. Let's now look at some of the greatest innovations humans made in the history of timekeeping. The very first timekeeping device dates back to 1500 BC, Egypt. The sundial had a mark for every hour. Two main problems arose using this model. Well, it can't be used without sun's help, so it was basically useless during the night. And it could only be measured in hours. So naturally, the next model tried to overcome these problems. As time passed by, candles became the next best thing to measure time. It uses the consistency of the burning speed of the candle, measuring a third of an hour or 20 minutes for a single mark. It solved both problems of the Egypt sundial. However, the candle had one crippling disadvantage. It required a lot of effort to keep track with real time and became a regal device that only the privileged can use. People started to wonder if there could be a portable yet reliable timekeeping device. Until now, all of the clocks were very fragile and stationary. That's why the hourglass was the innovation of the 11th century. Measuring the same amount of time consistently, the hourglass greatly improved safety and precision on sea, where small timekeeping devices were desperately needed. All things considered, it still had its downfall because one hour less could only measure one unit of time. Before moving on, at this point, people were pretty good at measuring time. They could have just been content with hourglasses and minutes and just live on. But what all of the clocks lacked was the ability to be seen by the public. Sure, a few people had these fancy clocks, but the majority still didn't have any sense of time. Since big cities and societies prospered, time only became meaningful when it could be shared. Then, in the 14th century, an amazing thing happened. It was the introduction of mechanical clocks. You might think that these complex machineries would have been invented by the greatest scientists and engineers of all time, but no, apparently that's not the case. Catholic monks were the leading innovators of mechanical clocks. They needed a public clock to make sure people didn't miss praying time. 
The evolution of mechanical clocks took a surprising turn in the 15th century when wristwatches were invented and then later used in war. Battle tactics revolving around accurate timekeeping had tremendous advantages over the classical ones. It's very ironic that the peaceful monk's invention came to be a deadly weapon of war. The next clock, pendulum, has two known contributors. In 1583, Galileo, at the age of 17, discovered that the time pendulum takes for a single swing is always constant regardless of its angle. Then, in 1656, Christian Huygens invented the first model of the pendulum clock. It was almost real time, missing only about 10 seconds a day. This great ex invention made precise science experiments possible that otherwise would only have been virtually thought of. It seemed that the pendulum clock was the closest we will ever get to measuring accurate time. Then, in 1929, the quartz clock was nominated as the official time standard for the world. The technology for refining quartz came out in the far past, but it developed and evolved until it was good enough to be a reliable timekeeping device. The crystal vibrates about 30,000 times a second, and the machine counts that vibration to know when to move a tick. Introducing the quartz clock as the official time standard for the world meant that everyone can now use the same time anywhere, everywhere. Isn't that amazing? Now, this is the present technology, 2019. The atomic clock enforces cesium-133, a volatile element which vibrates more than 9 billion times a second. It is the standard international unit of time today which means that a second is not a fraction of a minute anymore. We have reached a point where the precision is so good that we can just replace the natural concept of time with our own. So what's next? Or are we done? Accurately timing a second seems as good as we will ever get and the best we need. However, Looking back at history, I think we're far from done. The people of the 11th century would have thought the same with minutes. Sure, they knew what a second was. It's a 60th of a minute. But they didn't really need that small detail in their everyday lives. That's why it took a few centuries until people started seeking for a visual understanding of a second. At some point, the minute simply became too slow to represent a lot of things. Let's think about some of the world's hottest technologies right now. 5G, VR, electrical cars, Hyperloop. A common feature for them all is that they are related to incredible speed. Astronomical calculations happen at a snap of a finger, and interactions will happen at an unprecedented rate. If these technologies become our everyday lives, can we assure that the value of a second will still hold effective as now? Currently, we just use decimals for something smaller than a second, like 0.05 seconds, and regard second as the smallest measurement of time. If we divide that small second into something smaller, what would it mean? It means that we need that sliver of time for something to work. It means that a half a second, a quarter of a second, is relevant and that it matters. It means that we are, we are approaching real time and less delay. Maybe the clocks of the future will have an extra hand. Maybe stopwatches will record to a thousand, a million, I don't know, 10 millionth of a second. Maybe a new measurement of time will appear. Who knows? But one thing's for sure. Splitting and slicing time. That's how we will measure. That's how we will manage our time wisely. Thank you.